So a little over a year ago, DJI released the P1 camera for the M300 drone, specifically for photogrammetry. At the time, the only cameras or really drones that you could buy from DJI were the Phantom 4 Pro V2 with the 20 megapixel mechanical shutter or the X4S for the Inspire 2. Considering that this is DJI's first full frame camera sporting a 45 megapixel sensor, is the steep price of $6,300 really worth it? Well, in this video, we're gonna put it to the test against some of the other drones in DJI's lineup to see if it really holds up to that steep price tag. Hey guys, Dylan Gorman here. Welcome back to a, another YouTube video with me. For those of you who don't know who I am, I've been a commercial pilot for over nine years mainly focusing in photogrammetry, which is one of the main reasons why I'm really excited to talk about this camera that I have right behind me, the DJI P1 full frame camera from DJI. Super excited. And before we jump into the field and showcase you know, why this camera is so important and if it's really worth that $6,300 price tag is, let's jump into the specs. Let's talk about why this camera was built, who it's really for, and some of the advantages of what this will have over some of the other cameras in DJI's lineup. For starters, and if you didn't hear me mention this, it's a full frame camera. This is the first time that DJI has ever done this in any of their drones. And the biggest reason why this is such a big deal is, well, when it comes to the science of how photos are taken with a camera sensor is, well, the bigger the sensor, the more light that comes in. And the more light that you have come into the sensor, it just creates a better quality image. Now, historically, if you wanted to do photogrammetry, you would have had to buy either the Phantom 4 Pro V2 with the 20 megapixel one inch sensor that has a mechanical shutter or the X4S for the Inspire 2, which is basically the same camera as the one inch sensor in the Phantom 4 Pro. And well, that was really all you were stuck with. Unless you jumped up to the Inspire 2 with the X5S camera. Now, it doesn't have a mechanical shutter, so whenever you're flying really fast in the sky, taking a bunch of photos, you could get left with some motion blur. Now, there are some ways to mitigate that and have it happen uh, less often, but when it comes to actually you know, doing a bunch of photogrammetry, that's really all you had, unless you jumped over to a custom payload, which is something that I have done in the past before, where I would throw a custom drone with a Sony camera on there, which also happened to be full frame, to do large scale photogrammetry missions. Another thing that is great about this full frame camera from DJI, this P1, is well, it has a global shutter. Now you may have heard me mention that the Phantom 4 Pro V2 and the X4S camera have a mechanical shutter. Those are pretty close to what a global shutter is. Global shutter is just a better quality shutter when it comes to how cameras work. Most cameras and most drones that you're flying have an electronic shutter. Now that doesn't necessarily get rid of the motion blur or that rolling effect. If you've ever seen when you're, you're taking a photo uh, with a drone moving at fast speeds, well, with a mechanical shutter and a global shutter, those help eliminate a lot of those issues. And having a mechanical shutter or a global shutter helps out a tremendous amount when it comes to taking a ton of photos for photogrammetry. And another thing that's also really cool about why this P1 is such a big deal for the photogrammetry world is, well, the way that DJI works is it basically builds their ecosystems just like Apple, where you can technically plug and play whatever kind of camera sensors you want with whatever drones. Obviously with the Enterprise Matrice line, they have a certain set of cameras and sensors that work with specific drones. So realistically, you can only use this P1 with the M3 300 until they come out with another Matrice drone. Maybe that camera might work with the other Matrice drones, but for now, you're only allowed to operate it with this drone and how DJI operates their entire drones and cameras and sensors as kind of like an Apple ecosystem is, well, it's ease of use. As soon as you plug the camera into the drone, when you look at it on the controller, it just works seamlessly. There's no need to fight with settings and camera outputs and all kinds of stuff that comes with a custom drone. Now, there are some caveats to that as, again, one of the limitations is that you're only allowed to use this camera with the M300 drone. I can't go and take this camera and throw it on a Matrice 210 or an Inspire 2 or even the new M30 as they're just not supported 
where if you have a custom drone and a custom payload, you can really mix and match and throw whatever you want on there. Really, the sky's the limit in terms of when you're using a custom drone with custom cameras and sensors compared to how locked down DJI makes their ecosystem with their sensors and drones. Now that we got everything aside from what this camera is and why it's such a big deal, let's go ahead and jump into the field. We're gonna do a comparison between the Mini 2, which I've done plenty of videos on for photogrammetry, alongside with my tried and true X5S camera setup with the Inspire 2 and then pair it up against this P1 camera, 45 megapixel full frame sensor. Super excited to do this. Now just for some of the flight parameters and how I'm going to capture this, it's gonna be a fair flight between all of these drones. They're all gonna be flying at five meters a second at 160 feet. So again, the Mini 2 is a 12 megapixel sensor, the Inspire 2 with the X5S camera on there with a 15 millimeter lens equates to about a 35, 34 millimeter lens with a full frame camera. That's a 20 megapixel sensor micro four thirds. And then of course we've got the P1 with a 35 millimeter lens on there. We're gonna go and capture all of the Nadir photos, get them uploaded into Drone Deploy. And look at the drastic difference in image quality between all three different cameras all at the same height. So let's go and uh, let's go get these data sets. <music> Taking a look here at Drone Deploy on the desktop, the first data set we're gonna look at is from the Mini 2. So as you can see, it only took about 48 photos in total. Let's see where all of these photos were taken. And let's just take a look real quick. So it was 100 ISO, 1 hundredth of uh, shutter speed with a focal distance of 4.5 millimeters and an aperture of 2.8. So let's just zoom in and you know, for a quick little two and a half minute flight. It looks it looks pretty good. You know, there's some decent detail. I mean, we can see where the parking uh, line stripes are. See, obviously, that there's cars here. Looks like there's a power pole here, power line. Uh, let's see what the 3D model kind of looks like here. Now, obviously, I wasn't really shooting this to get done in a 3D model, uh, but it still looks it still looks pretty good. So for two and a half minute flight at 160 feet, this looks looks good. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the X5S. And instantly I can already tell that it has a better image quality, it has 98 photos this time. Now the Mini 2 has a little bit of a wider uh, lens or wider field of view compared to the X5S and the P1 camera here. So that's why it took a little bit more photos as it was just more compressed. Now I had all of the overlaps the same. I had a 70-60 overlap for front and side on both the Mini 2, the X5S, and the P1 camera. So, but again, taking a look here, we can see that we just have a whole lot more clarity when it comes to, I mean, even just the in the trees here, we can see the trees just pop out a little bit more. The paint lines stand out just a bit more and there's just more detail. Let's just take a look at this palm tree here. You know, this is pretty fuzzy. X5S, you know, I can actually start seeing the individual uh, palm leaves here. And even can start making out some of the branches in the tree, which is pretty cool. Where this one, it just kind of looks like a mess. You can pick out some of them, but still pr pretty blurry. But um, yeah, and then let me just do this test real quick. Let me take a look at how these images came out. So this is one 500th of a second, aperture of 7.1. Now I set this on auto. I didn't really change the aperture at all. So that might've been my fault in terms of how the clarity came out. But overall, it's still a very clear image overall. And now let's jump over to the P1 camera. And wow, yeah, just, it's a, it's a huge difference. I can I can already tell how much more clear this is I can actually start seeing some of the cracks in the asphalt here. Can really pick out all of these branches now. Let's look at these palm ferns. Oh wow, yeah, big, big, big difference. Just, this looks smushed. This just looks like a blob. And I just have a whole lot more detail in this as well. 
I mean, let's go ahead and do the compare view here. Let's, we've got the P1 on the left, and let's just do the Mini 2 here on the right. And let's just take a look at these palms here. Yeah, just huge, huge difference here. I mean, even, even look at this asphalt here. This just kind of looks like a blur where, wow, you can actually really start seeing that oil slick spot and degradation of, of the asphalt there. Let's go and look at this crack right here. So this is the P1 again. Yeah, Mini 2, you can't even really pick it out. The only reason you can see it is because, well, we can tell that it was there from the P1. Wow. And the P1, let me see how many photos the P1 took. Uh, it took 76 photos, so less than the X5S, more than the Mini 2. So it, it has about a good halfway point, um, medium point between how many photos it took. But again, I mean, you know, if, if you're doing large scale mapping with a full frame camera, or just in general, if you're doing large scale mapping of hundreds of acres or even thousands of acres a day, this is where a com camera like this comes into play. What I'll do is I'll have a link for all three of these data sets in the description below. So if you wanna go and take a look and compare and see how the image quality compares between all three different cameras, you'll have access to all those in the description down below. So the big question, who is this camera for and is it really worth it? Well, just taking a look at the data sets that we just looked at, you can just see how much better the image quality is with a full frame camera compared to a micro four thirds, which is the X5S and that one and a half inch sensor from the Mini 2. Now to answer that question of who is this for? Well, for me, this camera and drone setup has helped tremendously save about 70% time savings across the board in terms of whenever we flew it with an Inspire 2 with an X5S compared to flying it with the M300 and the P1 camera. I was in Arizona a few weeks ago. I had a 120 acre property that I had to fly. It took me two and a half hours to fly it and about 2,200 photos. Comparing that to the X5S, it would have taken about seven hours and over 7,000 photos to complete that same job. Now, when we have projects that scale a few hundred properties, those time savings add up really quickly to the point where if I'm only able to do one property a day or a food properties a day, depending on the size of the properties and how many batteries I have, well, I would much rather have this $21,000 setup right here, or really 25,000 because of all the extra batteries that you have to buy. And I can fly for 45 minutes with this compared to about 22 minutes with my X5S. I'm gonna take this all day long because one, it means I'm in the air less time, but I'm also capturing the same, if not even more data with this drone in comparison with the X5S. Now for somebody that isn't really doing large scale mapping, someone that has a bunch of smaller scale, let's say you know, 30, 40 acres that they're doing a day, you have to figure out what your trade off is. If you're looking for high GSD, which this drone is getting me incredible GSD values at higher altitudes just because of how much more megapixels that I have to work with, I'm able to do a whole lot more with less time in the same day with the same size properties compared to with the X5S setup. It is a big price jump to go from about a $12,000 setup with the X5S camera and Inspire 2 setup with batteries with a $25,000 setup like I have with this drone behind me. It is a huge jump, but for the time savings for me, it's, it's tremendous, it's astronomical. I'm able to hit several more properties within the same week with teams of pilots out across the US compared to you know a few properties a day or within a week with the same set of teams and the same drones of the Inspire 2. So in conclusion, is this camera really worth $6,300? Well, for me and my applications, absolutely, 100%. As, like I said, it's cut down 70% of the flight times on a lot of our projects, and it has allowed us to have higher throughput on completing our projects. But for most people on in the industry that don't have a lot of mapping missions or even just photographers out there. No, this this camera really isn't worth it for you, especially when you have to throw it on a full $21,000 setup. To fully maximize the capabilities with this camera, it's, it's just really not worth it. Honestly, I would just stick to an Inspire 2. If you can get your hands on an X4S, do that. Otherwise, use an X5S or you know simply just use what you got there's really no shame in the game there's you don't really have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to be able to have high quality imagery just fly lower and fly slower and with that being said if you've enjoyed this video please be sure to give it a like if you have any questions comments or concerns please be sure to drop it down in the comment section below 
love to have a conversation with you. And if you want to see more videos from me in the future, like the one that I have coming out next week about how I lost a $20,000 drone, very sad story. Uh, be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.